right, I'm going to show you how I finish my airmail bird stamps using my little finishing packs. So we're basically going to turn this finished bird into a beautiful little pillow. So I'm selling these coordinating trim packs uh, using the exact supplies I'm using to finish them. They have all Lady Dot Create supplies in them, including some velveteen, some rickrack, and some pom-pom trim. And you can see I just layered the trims along the edge. It's not too hard. We're going to do it together now. This is my finish of the May bird, the red-cheeked cordon blue. <laughs> I love him so much. And here's my finishing pack. I've cut these to the exact dimensions of the finishing pack so you can see how they turn out. So some basic supplies that you're going to need are two pieces of this lightweight fusible interfacing. This is iron-on interfacing. You can get it by the yard at any craft supply store. Just tell them you want some Pellon P44F. And we're gonna need two pieces. I've already pre-cut them. Basically, I haven't cut anything down yet, but we're going to iron these pieces on the back of the velveteen and the bird. You're going to need uh, some craft scissors. You're going to need some thread. Now these colored threads I'm going to use to sew down the rickrack and the palms. Now you can see the palm thread doesn't exactly match. That's okay. It kind of gets buried in between and you can't really see it. Uh, I would more worry about maybe the rickrack color being some kind of light orange because these stitches you would be able to see if, for example, I used black. So some sewing thread. You're going to need a sturdy, sharp-tipped embroidery needle because we're going to be going through a lot of layers. Uh, the velveteen is thick and the rickrack is kind of thick too, so you're going to need a nice, sturdy, sharp-tipped embroidery needle. A poker? <laughs> I use this metal meat skewer. You're going to need something to poke your corners out after you sew the pillow. You can use a chopstick, a meat skewer, a s as I have here. Uh, you don't want to use something like a pen or anything that could damage or potentially cause a mess. And whatever you use, you're going to be gentle with it. So you need something to poke your corners out. And I'm going to be using my rotary cutter and my rotary cutting mat to trim down my pillow. You don't need these supplies. You can use a scissor uh, to cut th cut it down. It's really not that big of a deal. You're also going to need a sewing machine. You could hand sew this pillow together, but it would probably kill your hands because we're using velveteen. Uh, so those are the supplies. Let's get started. Thing I'm going to do is iron my finished stitching. Of course, stitching side down. I have a nice fluffy tail. Tail? I have a nice fluffy tail. Towel over my ironing board to give it some cushioning so I don't crush my stitches. It also helps get the, the wrinkles out, to be honest. Uh, you're also going to get the wrinkles out of your velveteen, which was folded in your finishing pack. Uh, so you're going to put that nubby side down. Uh, optional, but you could use some Mary Ellen's Best Press and give it a little moisture. Your iron is going to be nice and hot, and we're going to get these nice and de-wrinkled. When you're ironing linen, which has a lot more flexibility to it than, say, a Lugana or especially a Ada, you want to be careful that you're keeping your lines straight. Uh, if there is an outer line, it's really easy to see. Just make sure you're not ironing it, like, crooked, because you can definitely make your lines crooked when you're ironing linen. So my guy is looking nice and square and I'm going to put my P44F over the back, double, triple check, <laughs> the back of my stitching and I'm going to put it on the back of my velveteen. 
Uh, P44F is just going to give you one more layer of stability and a little more thickness to your stitched piece. I'm also using crushed walnut shells and so I especially like the idea that it's keeping all the dust and whatever else might be in my crushed walnut shells inside of the pillow. <laughs> so uh, you can melt, you can over iron the interfacing so you just want to be careful you don't want to like leave the iron in one spot for a long time, but just gently with the heat, make sure you're getting all the little nubs of the interfacing. And it goes nubby side down. So how far you cut your seam away from the edge of your finished stitching is totally up to you. I wanted a really close seam. If that makes you nervous, you can give yourself more space here between your finished stitching and your the seam of your pillow. I wanted my trim to be just like right against the edge of the stitching. So I cut my seams one half inch from from my finished stitching. So I'm going to go over to my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut down my finished stitching one half inch from each of these edges and I will be right back. Okay, here's my cutout airmail stamp. You can see how much extra velveteen you have in the finishing pack. Here's my, here's a hack. And I don't know what a professional finisher would think about this. I don't cut this exactly to the size of my finished stitching. The reason is it kind of shifts around a little and I don't want to be caught in one of those weird predicaments where you get to the end and it doesn't match up very well. So what I do is I just leave myself extra. So I'm putting the nubby side up of the velveteen. You got to go right sides together. I'm going to cut this down, but I'm not going to cut it down to the exact size of my stitching. And I like, I don't know. I feel like it makes it easier. So here we go. Um, it is nice. I like using velveteen for, for many reasons. One of the reasons is it doesn't, it grips on to your stitching so it doesn't shift around a lot when you're sewing it, which is awesome. I, in my first stamp, I left the filling hole over here. I don't like it over here. I'm going to put it down here this time. So I'm going to give myself a couple pins on each side. Sometimes I don't even pin, to be honest. Okay, I have my pillow pinned all the way around. I have quadruple and centuple checked that I have right sides together. I am going to stitch all the way around here. I'm going to back stitch when I hit a corner just to reinforce the corners. I'm also going to leave this open. I'm going to back stitch here and do an extra back stitch here just to reinforce this little opening so I'm not sewing across this so I can get in there with my stuffing. Okay, the pillow has been sewn all the way around. And I'm now going to trim the velveteen to the size of the pillow. I am also going to cut diagonally across my corners, not hitting the stitching that I just did. This is where I get nervous and I have heart palpitations. Uh. All right. An extra tip in trying to get your pillow to lay nicely, and I learned this from Vana the Twisted Stitcher, is to iron both sides. Bo the, you're basically ironing the seam open. You just pull back your linen and run your iron along it. 
and then flip it over and do the same on the velveteen and that just helps the seam I think helps it to lie correctly lie correctly lay correctly English correctly okay here's the fun part <laughs> we're going to flip it inside out. Uh, when I flip it inside out, I try, you know, you got to put some stress on it. So I try to put as much of the stress on the velveteen as I can instead of my stitching. So if you need to do some pulling, pull the velveteen. Don't pull your stitching. <laughs> also, when you pull, you're creating more wrinkles because you're grabbing. So grab the velveteen if you have a choice. I am about to have a heart attack. This is the worst part of all. We have an, a messy lump. Okay, deep breaths, deep breaths. Iron meat skewer, very carefully. I'm going to gently not ruin my life. I'm just barely pushing. Barely pushing. Okay. We're gonna just gently coax those corners into making us happy. Now, the velveteen, because it's so thick, it, you're not going to get precise corners. There's too much going on in there. But the nice thing about our finishing technique here is, can you tell how poked out my corners are? You can't, because they have so much stuff on them. <laughs> so this is a very, very forgiving finish. Uh, look at them! They're brothers. They love each other. Oh, I love this series. Okay, he's wrinkly. He is wrinkly, wrinkly. So I'm going to iron him from this side, being careful to my velveteen. And just hit him with a little bit of heat. I feel like no matter what, you're going to have wrinkles on the front that you want to iron out. I take a spare piece of like linen or Lugana and... I just lay it on top and get some heat through there that way. You can also use like a clean tea towel and get all those wrinkles off. Ooh, much better. After you're happy with the unwrinkling process, you're going to stuff with the material of your choice. I like crushed walnut shells. If you want a nice tactile heavy finish, I love the crushed walnut shells with the velveteen. It is very pleasing. Uh, how I do the crushed walnut shells is I take my crushed walnut shells or lizard litter and I pour from the big annoying plastic bag into a cup. I then put a funnel inside of my finish and use that cup to pour the lizard litter, litter through the funnel. Uh, just makes it a little cleaner and neater. If you are using lizard litter, please be careful. It can have a little bit of a red dust to it, so you don't, for example, want to shake the funnel up and down. Um, you just got to be careful because it can be a little bit messy. So we're going to iron a little bit more and stuff them up. Here goes nothing. See what I mean? I don't know if you can see that cloud of, like, dust that's coming up. <laughs> Perhaps I need to upgrade my lizard litter. So I've got a nice knot in 
my length of sewing thread, which I have attached to an embroidery needle. I think you can see that my finishing philosophy <laughs> is if you can leave yourself some wiggle room by doing something halfway, then do it. Um, you know, don't cut down the, the backing until you absolutely have to, because you never know. You might need to rip out and redo. Um, so this was my big turning pocket. I have stuffed, but you can see you can't totally pack it full or it would be a big mess. I'm going to bury my little knot and I'm going to stitch until I can't fit the funnel in no more. So I'm going to leave myself a funnel sized hole so that I can top off those walnut shells because you can see I have extra space to fill. So I have my needle. I bury the knot. I'm going to go behind. Can you see that? I'm going to go behind the velveteen and put my knot in there where you can't see it to attach my sewing thread. Now I love, I love finishing with velveteen on a seam. It is so much more forgiving than cotton. <laughs> it's so much nicer. It's so, I mean, you can, you can totally hide this. Cotton, I feel like you have to do that annoying ladder stitch and I hate it and it's annoying. Uh, I just whip stitch this closed. Remember, this is going to, sorry, this is going to be hidden by Rick Rack, which is also very forgiving. So if you want to do a fancy stitch, you know, the one that you, you go back and forth with, you can. I'm just whip stitching it because it's easy and quick. And we love it. Okay, just giving us a little bit more. Look how careful I was. I was so careful. I somehow ended up with some dust residue again. I, I'm, I'm, today I'm going to be changing my brand of crushed walnut shells. This lizard litter is too, got too much of a residue to it. Anyway, uh, I'm now to the end of sewing up my little window. And to make the last few stitches, I don't let the stitch go all the way through. I go back and create a little knot. I like to do that two or three times in the same spot. And then I'm going to go back in and kind of bury my tail, so I'm just sticking the needle in. And without losing the needle, pull it through the back of the pillow and snip my end. All right. Oh, I know I keep doing this, but look at them. I'm gonna go clean up my crushed walnut shell mess and then we will talk about how to put on the trims. Brothers, brothers, they were never such devoted brothers. You will need to iron your rickrack because it'll probably be wrinkly for being wrapped up. Iron it so it's nice and straight. Do not iron the palms. They will melt. You will destroy them. Ask me how I know. So, iron your rickrack. I'm going to show you how to take the palms off of the tape. You don't want this tape. You just want to gently, with much gentleness, kind of pull the palms away and you will find that there is a string a band of threads that keeps the palms on the twill tape. Okay. Uh, 
at first it's kind of hard to grab it, but here it is. Okay, here's my string. I'm going to pull it and bunch it. Pull it and bunch it and just kind of yank it. Okay. And then when you feel like you can't pull it and bunch it no more, you can cut it. Okay, so we're getting rid of this string. It's a magic string. And once you pull the magic string, the palms should easily separate from the tape. See what I'm saying? And you just want to repeat that process until you can just throw the tape away. You don't need it. Unless you're doing some really interesting finishing with leftover pom-pom tape, and if so, I really need to see that. I'm just going to keep doing this until my whole length is free, free indeed. First up is we're going to go all the way around with the rickrack. You need a nice long length of your orange, whatever color rickrack you're using, uh, with a knot on the end, of course. I'm going to leave my overlap where my messy seam is, and I'm going to leave myself a tail. The reason I leave myself a tail is I don't know how the rickrack is exactly going to match up around all the bends. When we get back to this spot, I want to have some, a little bit of leeway to play around with to try to get it to match up, so I'll leave myself a little tail. I'm also going to try to line up that first corner. I don't know if you can see, but I like it when the rickrack kind of lays over the corner. It doesn't always happen but we're going to make it happen the first time. So, taking my thread, I'm going to bury my knot that I made in the back of the rickrack. Sorry for the bump. All right. And we're going to get going. Now, for the rickrack, I'm going to make a tiny stitch on as... Lois at Lady Dot says every little dragon tooth. So eh, my, the first couple stitches are always annoying because everything is flopping everywhere and you have so much thread on your needle. So I don't know if you can see what I just did, but I got to the next dragon tooth. I'm evenly laying the highs and the lows across each side. You're just gonna have to forgive me for going out of camera every now and then. This is a super awkward kind of thing to film. Okay. After you get like the first five stitches in, you know, time flies when you're having fun, right? So here's my little stitch. Here's my little stitch. See it? And I am taking this is why you need a really good needle. I'm taking a stitch to the next dragon tooth. It doesn't really matter what direction your stitch lays in because they're supposed to be kind of tiny and you won't be able to really see them. Okay, so see I came up at that, that tooth. I'm going back down, taking a little stitch. And going to this next little bend in the road. Okay, so that's what we're doing, and I will catch you on a corner. Okay, I'm now at the corner. The corners are going to happen how they happen, and your goal is just to get the teeth to lay down nicely along the corner. So just sew down your teeth and make them look nice. You can see, for example, I mean, when you just look at the pillow, you, it, it doesn't matter. 
See, on this one, I had a tooth nicely flopped down on the corner. On this one, it is a space between the teeth. Overall, aesthetically, can you even tell? No, don't stress out about it. I also wanted to tell you, I was propping it up so that you could see it. It is definitely easier to work from the side, so lay it on its side, lay out your rick rack, and kind of lean over it, undo it. That way you're not dealing with the excess, you know, the fabric flopping around. Anyway, I am down to my fourth corner, and I'm able to see where this might kind of match up. You might need to just go a little bit tighter, tighter with your rick rack. You might need to go a bit... For me, it's a little bit looser. If I was doing the same tension, it would not line up. So I'm going to go a little bit looser and go around this corner. I'm going to cut myself a little bit of overlap and then I will show you how I finish it. Okay, I just made my last tooth stitch before this overlap. So you want your raw edge on the bottom. Here's my first tooth stitch on the bottom that I made when we started. And then I trimmed this back a little bit. So you want the raw edge on the bottom, so that's just going to stay there. Uh, the top, you're going to do a little bit of a tuck. Now, I have a little bit, a little bit more than I would like, so I'm going to trim it down. Carefully, you can take away more, but you can't add it back. And then I'm going to flip this under. Just a wee bit. Hopefully you can see that. I hope you just saw that whole explanation, because who knows? Um, so I have my raw edge. I have my flipped edge. And then I'm just going to do my last little tooth stitch here. And then I will do some extra stitches to kind of just bring those together and make sure they stay secured down. Okay, not my best join in the entire world, but the good news is we are putting palms on top, which will be a little distraction from my kind of awkward join. Oh well. Uh, trim down any palms that might have like imploded while you separated them from the tape. And we're going to go around with our palms the same way we did with the Rick Rack, only they are quicker because we don't have two teeth to tack down. We're just going straight down the middle. I'm not going to do the join in the same spot that I did my Rick Rack join because that's just a lot of bulk um, and the joins are kind of awkward to do and, you know, all the reasons. Uh, so same kind of deal. I will bury my knot in the back of the rick rack. We're going to be going down the center of the rick rack. And I'm going to leave myself... So my join will be like right here. I'm going to leave myself a tail for matching up purposes. It doesn't need to be a ton. So I'm starting my thread right there. I have another tutorial on my YouTube channel about attaching palm trim. The basic idea is you're going to make a stitch which goes over the in between the palms and then you're going to just kind of come up like, I don't even need the palms at this point you're just gonna come up to you know another space in the center of this rickrack. You kind of do want to catch the pillow on the bottom you don't want to just attach it to the rickrack in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to cheat on this first stitch and bring it through and then throw the palms in. So my pom-pom trim is going. This is quite an awkward way of going about it, isn't it? It's going in here. Okay. All right. So there we go. They are attached. I have my thread. I'm going to 
go. I'm going to put my stitches from left to right. Now, if you are left-handed, you might want to do the opposite. So I'm basically, I'm going horizontal over that middle of the palm. And then when I come up with my needle, I'm going to go to the left of the palm trim. You can skip. You don't have to do every little divot between the palms. See that? Oh, it's so pretty. Look at it. It's gone. Okay. You can skip. You don't want to skip around the corners, of course, because you don't want them flopping off into the ether. But that's what I'm going to do all the way around. Yes, it is awkward. But we shall persevere. All right, I've made it all the way around with my palms and we came back to the beginning. Now, the palms are a little bit easier in my opinion than lining up the rickrack. You basically just need to make a judgment call and uh, just uh, snip. Make sure I don't cut my thread. No going back now! Okay. So you can see I snipped. Basically what I'm going to do is take some stitches and just do some extra nailing down of what we got going on here. Because uh, you don't want this popping up like this. You want them all in a nice little line and secure your thread. Here is the finished result, my friends. I'm thinking this is, I don't know, amazing, lovely, and perfectly cute. Thanks for joining me. I would love to see your airmail birds. Make sure you tag me wherever you post them on Facebook or Instagram because I will ooh and ah over them. Because how could you not? See you next time. Bye, friends.